I'm Dr. Don Patton. I've worked as a geologist in the U.S., Canada, Australia, England, Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, Jordan, Israel, and Turkey. I have participated in dinosaur excavations in Colorado, Texas, Utah, Wyoming, Canada, and Bolivia. I excavated the longest consecutive dinosaur trail on the American continent. I know something of the fossil record. And I agree with Charles Darwin, who honestly acknowledged that the fossil record was his greatest problem. He says traditional forms must have existed. He says geology assuredly does not reveal them. And he said this is perhaps the greatest objection that can be urged against my theory. Darwin predicted that his greatest problem, the fossil record, would be solved in the future. And we've heard some of those predictions today still. Predictions provide opportunities to test theories. But Darwin's predictions failed. I have seen this, and objective evolutionary scientists readily acknowledge this. Niles Eldridge, a curator at the American Museum of Natural History, says Darwin prophesied the gaps would be filled. It has become abundantly clear the fossil record will not confirm this part of Darwin's predictions. Nor is the problem a miserably poor record. The fossil record simply shows that this prediction was wrong. Now to people with great faith in evolution, that doesn't matter. But hiding these realities from our school children is inexcusable. Censorship has no place in science. Worse than that, we hear dedicated propagandists telling students their transitional forms everywhere. And some evolutionists of great faith claim every fossil is a transitional form. Michael Roos, one of our nation's leading philosophers of science, a devout evolutionist, acknowledges the fanatical promotion of evolution is religious. In the National Post, he says evolution is promulgated as an ideology, a secular religion, a full-fledged alternative to Christianity. He's not saying that's necessarily the case, teaching evolution, but he says we often see fervor that would rival a fundamentalist preacher. And we've seen that today. In the journal Science, he, he says creationists do have a point. This popular evolutionism is often an alternative to religion, and it exists. And I agree with Dr. Roos. When we hear fervent dogmatists insisting that their view has no weakness, or we shouldn't talk about it, we see religious fundamentalism, not good science. Our school children have a right to all the evidence in spite of the propagandistic demands of evolutionary religious fanatics. Please do not hinder that opportunity. Mr. Mercer. Well, thank you for being here. I have a lot of respect for where you've been, what you've seen, what you've done, and uh, your comments here. It's very interesting because uh, you're, I've heard it said before, are we talking about a different philosophy of religion? I've heard concerns before, is evolution another philosophy of religion. When Humanistic were, naturalism has been defined by the Supreme Court as a religion. As a religion. And of course it was Michael Roos, the philosopher of science. <laughs> I've talked with him two different occasions in the past year. He's, he's a nice fellow, but he's as devoted an evolutionist as you'd ever meet. And for those but he who, acknowledges this is religion. And you just listen to the fervor and the dogmatism and uh, I think that's establishment of religion when we say you teach this and nothing else. I'd like to say that we talk about, again, 99% agreement on the issue of microevolution. We brush our teeth, we wash our hands, we put a band-aid over an open wound. We understand microevolution, the verifiable evidence there. The question has been, as you're suggesting, 
what the layman calls at least macroevolution, those major changes. Uh, we're hearing three things. Number one, there's no discussion. It's all fact. Your comment on that? That's religious dogmatism. <laughs> it's false on the face of it. But they affirm it. I believe. And it's a statement of faith. And we've heard today, we've heard last time, we've heard in, in, in November, we've heard in the papers that there's complete agreement among scientists. Is that true? Now, let me put it bluntly. <laughs> That's a lie. I think a lie is too nice of a word, but thank you. <laughs> okay. yes. Ms. Lowe? Um, Dr. Patton, you've heard possibly some discussion about our Earth and Space Science standards, and we have a standard that deals with fossils. And as the standard reads now, it refers to proposed transitional fossils. Would you deem that an accurate assessment of the, trans of the transitional fossil record, or do you believe that it's unquestioned? I'm not sure I understand. I'm that. asking about the word proposed, proposed transitional fossils. Does the science well, community I think agree about the, science, about the transitional fossils, or is there still some disagreement? Are, are some not questioned? Uh, it, the word proposed is what I'm, I'm asking about. There, there's tremendous disagreement. You've got Niles Eldridge. You've got uh, Stephen Stanley from Johns Hopkins. Uh, and, of course, uh, Stephen Gould, the late Stephen Gould, saying, no, there, this is not so. And then you've got... Dawkins saying, why, well, yes, there are all kinds of them. Uh, you, you can quote people on any side of that as to whether this is a transitional form, Archaeopteryx. Well, Gould said, no, that's just uh, uh, an amalgamation. It's not a transitional form. And others say, well, yes, it's a perfect transitional form. Uh, I think students need to know what the alternatives are and look and see what the facts are, and they can decide. Is it weakening the science to refer to them as proposed transitional fossils? No, I think they need to know they're proposed. Thank you very they much. They also need to know <laughs> what the objections are. Thank you. Ms. Cargill? I have a question. Yes, um, thank you so much for, for being here today, and I appreciate the information you have. And I'm, I'm also very fascinated by the fossil record, I, and I think it's something that our, our students uh, really enjoy learning about. I mean, you say the word dinosaur, and they just they're all over it. So I'd like to hear more at, at some point, maybe afterwards, about your um, looking into the dinosaur findings you saw. But uh, do you know about how much, I've done a little research and I'm just trying to confirm it. Uh, how much is thought, how much of the fossil record has been filled in? Do you have any data on that? Or I can tell you what I found and you could tell me. Well, in, in order to know how much on. has been filled in, you have to know what was there <laughs> to be filled in. Well, uh, so okay. you, it, it, it's, it's a matter of interpretation. Uh, you will find credible scientists, evolutionary scientists, who will say there are major gaps at every level where you're talking about uh, classes or orders, any, anything significantly different. There's a gap, a dramatic gap. Uh, well, and. Others will say no, because they, if you got a fossil, this is transitional somewhere, and they have great faith that somewhere it fits in, and so they'll say no. It's, it's well, one of the figures I have found, uh, one of the numbers, and I've seen this consistently in other places, was you know, less than 1% of all species is what we have fossil evidence for, approximately. That's what scientists think. And I, you know, whether that's true or not, we know it's a very small, small number that has been found out of the possibilities and you know what I have seen in some science books and in my readings is that you know the reason the number is so small is because we just haven't found the others yet okay. the others haven't been discovered uh, yet and I'm wondering where is the science I'm basing so much data or, or such a huge presumption of universal common ancestry and everything that science is telling us the fossil record says when it is such a tiny tiny piece of data that we literally have less than one percent. That's the highest number I've found. I think it might be even less than that. Um, well, it, the problem is there are billions and billions of clams. It, 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 fossil records mainly clams, clams, and more clams. Somebody said. Maybe we hadn't found all the clams yet, but what we have found shows a very definite order. And this is, uh, is what Niles Eldridge was saying. The, the problem is not a, a, a miserably poor record. 
the record has simply shown the prediction is wrong. And consistently, we see lots of clams, and then there's a gap. And the more you find, the more obvious and dramatic that gap becomes. I just have Thank an you. informational question. Did you give us both of these BBC things on the... No, no that's something else. That's no. something else. Okay, thanks. Okay. Now I had one page. Okay. Real uh, Mr. Bradley, and then let's move on. So, oh, just uh, thank you for coming, and I'm glad you were able to testify. And I've attended uh, Dr. Patton's lectures before, and his best picture is wearing his Indiana Jones outfit. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for coming. Thank you.